Hello everyone, my name is Confident and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Redis data source on AppSmith. And we're going to do that by building out the simple application we have on the screen. Uh, taking a look at the application, we have a form right here where a user can enter his name and email. And clicking on the submit button would perform a write operation to the Redis database. And similarly, we have um, a bunch of widgets right here with a button that lets us read that data from your database. So clicking on the get user button, we'll go to the database and fetch that user's record and we can display it using the text widgets we have right here. So this is what we'll be doing in the video and let's get started. The first thing we need to do here is to go to the data sources section and create a connection to the Redis database. And we can do that using the Redis data source that is available natively on AppSmith. So let's go to Redis and we can give this a name. So let's call this Redis. And now let's go on to configure the connection to the Redis database we already have. So I have a Redis instance and let's um, paste in the host address as well as the port. So this is going to be 17641. And we also need to fill in the password. So for the password, I'm just going to enter the password and we have a password right there. Let's click on the test button to see if this is correct. And we see that the data source is valid and let's save this. And there we have a Redis data source. So we can go on to write a query that allows us to write to the database. And for that, I'm just going to click on the new query button on the Redis data source. So let's call this query save user. And for the query, this is going to be a set operation. For the key, we want to save this using the user key. And for the data we'll be saving to the database, uh, we want to save the user's name and email. So let's grab the user's name and email. We want to save an object having the user's name and email. So for the name, we can pull that from the input on the page. So this is going to be input1.text. And similarly for the email, we can pull that from the second input we have on the page. So this is email. And this is going to be coming from input2 dot text and right there we are sending up the name and email but the set operation only accepts strings so all we need to do is to stringify this object we have right here so this is going to be json.stringify and there we would be able to um, wrap this object in a string format so that we can save it in the database so clicking on the run button let's see if this works and you and we have a response here telling us that that operation was successful. So we can head back to the page and configure the submit button such that when it is clicked on, we actually go to execute the save user query. And that would save a user to the database. So let's try this out. I'm going to type in John and email John ado.com. So we can click on the submit button and that has been saved. Now, let's be the flow that allows us to read data from the database. So once it's such that when we click on the get user button, we actually go to get the data of the user that has been saved. So to do that, let's create a new query to read data. So let's call this query get user. And for the operation, this is going to be a get operation. And we want to get the user, which is the user key. So clicking on the run button, we actually get some data coming from the database, which represents the user that has been saved. So we can head back to the page and hook this up to the get user button. So when the get user button is clicked on, for the unclick action, we want to go to call the get user query, and that would get the data for that particular user that has been saved. And we can go on to display that data using the text widgets we have here. So to display the name, we can access that from the get user dot data and taking a look at this we see that we have an array containing a single item so we can access that data from index zero and we have the results key and here we have the data for that particular user but you notice that this is a json string so what we need to do is to pass this back so that we can access the name from this particular um, object so we can wrap this up in braces and then call json dot pass all right and now we are passing that data so we can go on to access the name so this will be dot name 
and then we have the user's name displayed and similarly we can also display the user's email by doing the same thing for the text field but editing this to say email and then we have the user's email and we can go on to test this by um, typing in a new user so let's say mary and this will be mary at do.com and clicking on the submit button should write that user to the database and we can click on the get user button to read that data from the database. So we've been able to see how to use the Redis data source on AppSmith and we've done that using a simple write and read operation. You can build on this and expand this to fulfill the need you would have in your real world application. But this gives you an idea on how to use the Redis data source. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, leave a like, get subscribed and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.